Hi, um, so welcome to uh, this webinar. Uh, <clears throat> so the aim of this webinar uh, is to give you an uh, introduction into what streaming integrator is and also uh, what uh, uh, streaming integration is in general. So for the, the topic for today is empowering enterprise integration with streaming. So uh, I'm Sajit Ravindra, uh, who's a technical leader at WSO2, so he, he's working on a streaming integrator product. Along with me, uh, my colleague Anush Jayasundara, uh, who's a senior software engineer in the streaming integrator product, will also join uh, in this webinar. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, move on. <laughs> Okay, so uh, today's agenda is um, to, uh, first uh, we'll uh, see uh, what uh, streaming integration means and then move on to see how the uh, WSO2 streaming integrator can be used to cater streaming integration um, requirements. And uh, after uh, uh, being introduced to WSO2 streaming integrator, we'll see what are the most common uses, use cases for streaming integrator and how it can fit into a uh, uh, real world enterprise integration uh, scenario. And then uh, uh, it will be followed by a demo uh, done by my colleague Kanusha. And then finally, uh, we would like to get uh, questions from you if you have it. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so what is streaming integration? Um, so before we talk about streaming integration, uh, let's define what a stream is. So in general, we can say a stream is a continuous flow of data. So there are a few important characteristics of a stream. So a few, uh, I have listed few here. So one most uh, important characteristic is uh, it carries large volumes of data, meaning it can carry uh, hundreds of thousands of events per uh, time unit as well as uh, uh, in, uh, kilobytes, megabytes, or even gigabytes in a very uh, limited time frame. And also, these uh, large volumes of data are flowing at high velocities. Uh, so uh, a, a system that is processing a stream can uh, May, can be exposed to maybe 1,000 or maybe even more 10,000 uh, events per second. Uh, another fact of uh, about stream is they are very verbose, meaning it might carry a lot of information. If not processed properly, you might miss the valuable or action or actionable insights. Okay, so due to this uh, nature of streams, handling streams require some special techniques, unlike normal request response uh, uh, communication. Okay. So the reason for these special requirement, special techniques is the overwhelming volume and velocity, and also um, it will it, uh, it might require to do stateful on the fly processing. So stateful means you might need to remember what happened in the past. So uh, and also you might uh, need to keep that state in your memory and process them on the fly without interacting with the uh, with io in order to reduce latency and also um, the, these systems uh, who, which are handling streams have to be fault tolerant they should be able to withstand these large uh, volumes and velocities with the, and also they should not apply back pressure on the publishers and also in case of a inevitable failure it, it should be able to resume from where it left so that you don't lose any data okay so if we talk about streaming integration in particular uh, uh, the stream the term streaming integration is a, a heavily overloaded term so it's being uh, it's i mean if we look at the 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 the, uh, the market or if we just do an internet search we can see it's being used to mean different things but uh, it, when it comes to the context of uh, the, the enterprise integration, it can be described under two broad uh, functionalities. One is integrating 
streaming data the other one is acting based on data streams so integrating data streams mean make sure that you uh, make available the streams of data to downstream consumers in desired formats in desired protocols uh, and acting based on data streams means uh, yeah, this, you can uh, take uh, uh, actions such as API calls or generate alerts, etc., uh, by processing uh, data streams. Okay. So, okay, if we talk about integrating uh, streaming data in particular, there are two uh, main functionalities that we can identify. Uh, so, on your left, if you see, so the first uh, type of functionality is integration, integrating data streams with various destinations. So here, what happens is uh, there will be a source uh, such as a software system or a SaaS application or an IoT sensor which generates a streams of data. And the downstream consumers might expect that stream of data in different formats. For an example, you might need to write it into a DB, uh, and, or you might need to send it as a post request to a certain software. You might need to write it into a JMSQ or even generate an aggregated uh, 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 stream with uh, more valuable information. So there you receive the, the inbound stream and integrate it in the way that the consumer wants. So that's type one. And the other uh, type that we have we can identify is you might need to integrate uh, static sources as streams. So here, uh, for uh, if, uh, the most common examples are files and DBs. So uh, in in uh, it is very common that people needs to read files in real time and listen to DB events in real time and generate streams out of that. So for the downstream uh, consumers, these static sources are seen as real time streams. So this is where real time ETL comes into the picture. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so and then if we talk a little more about acting upon streaming data, so so uh, in order to uh, act upon uh, the, the the act upon uh, streams of data, uh, you might uh, you might need to detect patterns or detect predefined conditions. Uh, so uh, these conditions and patterns will vary depending on your business requirement or what you really want to achieve. So in order to detect these patterns or conditions, you will need stream processing. So stream processing is a technique which can be used to examine streams in various uh, ways <coughs> uh, in order to uh, find uh, interesting patterns and conditions uh, or even uh, pr produce uh produce uh, results from by processing raw streams okay and also to take uh, complex actions you need enterprise integration capabilities okay uh, so when we say actions so actions can include calling an api or calling a web service trigger an alert through sms or email or rather publish it to a monitoring dashboard where the responsible parties can monitor and act upon so uh, so these are the possible uh, actions uh, that uh, uh, that uh, a system can take okay uh, right so so now we looked at uh, what uh, streaming integration means in general so uh, if we look at the market uh, so this streaming integration is an emerging technology. Actually, uh, it's, it's, I mean, the importance is, is, uh, of streaming integration is becoming evident day and day. So one uh, a good uh, uh, evidence for this is uh, if you take uh, the Gartner report that was published in July 2019 with the title Choosing Application Integration Platform Technology, it, uh, it has two key uh, findings. So one finding is streaming-based integration is one of the key emerging functionalities used to implement modern integration scenarios. And also it says that lack of streaming capabilities a uh, weakness of conventional integration offerings. So in a wake of this, many vendors offer streaming 
or eventing as part of their integration platform okay um so let me uh, talk a little more about uh, like why streaming integration is a will be a problem that you'll have to face uh, maybe uh, rather sooner or later um so uh, so uh, now a lot of data sources new software systems expose their themselves as streams of data it uh, I mean, like sometime back it used to be a flat file or they might write that they output to a DB. But now uh, these uh, information are exposed at continuous streams of data. And also, uh, we all know now that data, people need data in real time. For an example, if you are booking a taxi or if you are booking a hotel, I mean, uh, the, the, you need that information then and there. You need your taxi, uh, the status of your taxi uh on real time right and you need to do your booking of your hotel on real time so you can't afford lag so in the modern era even minutes is uh, considered to be too late so you have to have seconds latency when accessing data and also event driven systems uh, are getting uh, uh, popular these days so in an event driven system usually you have set of reactive software applications or microservices connected to an event bus uh, and uh, so uh, how they work is like when you when a software component or a microservice gets an event it reacts to that and gener might generate another event which will be passed on to another software application so that's how uh, a event driven system works in general so in such scenario you it is you might you will need to expose all your data sources as streams i mean still you can't yeah in in reality still there are file based systems and db systems in your enterprises so you have uh, to expose them as streams and also uh, the due to the fact that now uh, all data are passed as streams among the components you will need stream processing to process data process uh, uh, to, to for example do certain transformation to aggregate to summarize so likewise you will need stream processing so these are part of streaming integration and also uh, the agility and scalability of systems is at utmost important nowadays so uh, due to the rapid growth of your customer base or customer may, or other customer demands so i mean we have to expect that it is it will be a uh, more frequent occur frequent event to see software system software components or systems joining and leaving your um, uh, platform so you should be able to accommodate uh, such uh, such uh, agility so in such uh, in such scenario uh, like uh, if we follow like point to point integration for an example when it comes to data uh, if you do like uh, uh, if you move data from one point to another uh, so that that model is not scalable so we have to have a proper way uh, that scales as the system grows okay so okay so that was a general introduction about what streaming integration is and how the streaming integration uh, what is the importance of streaming integration and then we'll uh, talk about the WSO2 streaming integrator product. Okay. WSO2 streaming integrator uh, product, it actually comes under WSO2 enterprise integrator product suit. So it's a, a streaming data processing engine. So there are two main functionality that it can uh, carry out. So the first thing is integrating st streaming data that is making the streaming data available for downstream consumers to consume in different formats and also take action based on streaming data so i explain what actions means uh, in the context of uh, applications enterprise integration so uh, the, the so uh, ws2 streaming integrator uh, lets uh, users take action based on streaming uh, data as well okay in order to achieve these two broad functionalities the streaming integrator is designed to consume streaming data uh, uh, 
that is the large volumes uh, of streaming uh, data that are flowing in high velocities and uh, so it can withstand these uh, uh, this uh, mega nature of streams and also it uh, it has the capability to apply stream processing techniques to process such streams upon receiving okay after receiving the data once the processing is done the result can be integrated with one or more destinations or you can trigger integrations complex integrations uh, with WS2 streaming integrate and also I would uh, like to bring uh, highlight the fact that WS2 streaming integrator is powered by CDIO. So CDIO is a was is, is a well known stream processing engine that is there for like a, for nearly a decade. So it has many uses uh and it's a proven technology so uh, it is also recognized by the cloud native computer foundation as a streaming and a messaging system okay so <clears throat> in high level so uh, we can say that a streaming integrator is a product which can be used to connect any data source to any de any destination so may it be a streaming messaging system such as kafka or jms or nats or let it be a software system or iot sensor let it be a SaaS app or a cloud storage or a, or a static data source such as a database or a file so it can it, it can extract data from these so uh, all such sources as a stream of data after extracting this uh, uh, all these uh, uh, after extracting in uh, data as streams from all these sources then uh, you can apply stream processing techniques regardless of the nature of the original source in order to process that data so uh, as we go on i'll uh, explain talk a little more about what type of what this each type of processing means okay and then after processing these informations can be integrated with any destination uh, with the types that i mentioned earlier and also uh, i would like to uh, bring your attention to the fact that the streaming integrator is uh, uh, closely uh, integrated with ws2 micro integrator which is another product under ws2 enterprise integrator 7 uh, product suit so we'll talk about that uh, uh, more about that a little later and uh, not only you can integrate data with, uh, with the destination on real time it also helps uh, lets you fetch data sorry uh, fetch data on demand via a rest api uh, using uh, ad hoc queries okay okay uh, okay so wso2 streaming integrator has uh, uh, comes with like 60 plus production grade well tested connectors uh, with these connectors we are able to offer rich connectivity to variety of uh, software systems with uh, which is using different protocols and uh, uh, communicating different semantics so uh, these connectors can be classified into several uh, uh, areas such as streaming systems when you say streaming systems kafka nats or jms RabbitMQ and real-time data is extraction uh, to do uh, to enable real-time ETL so we have a CDC change data capture connector which supports Oracle my MySQL MongoDB and files uh, reading files in a streaming manner we also support transport protocols such as HTTP TCP gRPC Drift and many more and also streaming integrator can be integrated with storages such as oracle mysql msql and also big data uh, storages such as mongodb cassandra hbase and cloud storages such as uh, amazon s3 uh, gcas and azure okay. the streaming integrator offering also comes with a, a very uh, sophisticated tooling uh, that can be used to develop your streaming stream processing applications so it's a single ide for design 
and develop testing and validating and exploit exporting and deploying your uh, streaming application so it comes with a graphical and a source editor uh, an event simulator and also a sample explorer which can which can be used for your learning which has like 100 uh, pre-compiled samples for you for to match different um, scenarios and also in the future we are planning to bring in the, the the extension store into the tooling so that you can search for the extensions or the connectors that we have uh, through the tooling itself and um, so it supports both cent centralized and decentralized uh, deployments so and also the meaning it can be deployed on vm or in docker or in a container orchestration system such as uh, kubernetes so WSO2 streaming integrator is a uh, container friendly by design. So there are several attributes uh, which makes it con container friendly. For an example, it has a small distribution size, which makes your Docker images uh, small, and also a very resource a low resource footprint. Uh, and it starts up in less than uh, five seconds. And also, its a clustering architecture does not require internet communication, so that it can thrive very easily in a container environment. And also, we have built a CRD or a custom resource definition uh, in order to help seamless interaction with Kubernetes um, uh, in order to deploy and monitor streaming um, uh, integrator deployments done on Kubernetes. And if you think about its deployment architecture, you can uh, deploy a zero data loss deployment with just two nodes. So we don't need like a lot of nodes with just two nodes. It can uh, can achieve a zero data loss deployment. And also, uh, if it's not involved in heavy I/O, uh, it can handle up to hundred thousand events per second. And also. Uh, the streaming integrator can scale horizontally with data partitioning. So we have uh, special constructs to uh, publish pa data in a partition manner as well as to store data in a partition manner so that you can scale your deployment horizontally. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, so uh, see, streaming integrator uses uh, the CDIO as, it, as its core. So for those who are not familiar with Siddhi, uh, so I, let me touch upon what Siddhi QL means, Siddhi query language is in very briefly. So it's a streaming query language that is designed to process streams, uh, stream uh, of events. So, so in Siddhi, a stream is a collection of continuous events that is flowing. So uh, in Siddhi QL, you have to, uh, define your logic in a, in an entity in the flat file called a CD application. Right? So here, this is a very uh, simple CD application. So here, you first you can define the C, uh, define a name for your application, and then in order to receive and publish data, you have to define what are the streams that I am going to consume and what I am going to publish. So you have to. Uh, Define your streams uh, along with what are the, the, the attribute that it contains, and then you can write queries upon these streams. For an example, here you are you are consuming the temp stream, and then uh, collecting that events into a five-minute time window, and after that you calculate the average for that five minutes, and then group by the root number and insert into a another stream so this is the type of a uh, query that you would like write in uh, uh, in uh, cd uh, in order to be deployed in streaming integrator okay Do you, uh, uh, so, so so as i said earlier cd is a, a very advanced stream processing uh, engine so the stream processing capabilities of CD, we would like to categorize like under six main categories. So that is enrich, transform, cleanse, correlate, aggregate, and insights. So enrich means uh, you can uh, add value, add more information to data as you pass it on to the downstream consumers. Transform means you can transform data from one format to another. For an example, from a JSON to XML or JSON, simple JSON to a complex JSON. Uh, so cleanse uh, means 
uh, you can drop unwanted events or rather or uh, obfuscate uh, information for an example if you like to be gdpr compliant you can use this and you can correlate multiple streams that are consumed by my, the streaming integrator server and then also you can aggregate and summarize data on the fly without persisting them uh, with uh, with no latency added at all and also uh, the siddiq will has complex event processing uh, capabilities so using that you can detect patterns and sequences of occurrences as well so one of the unique features in uh, uh, streaming integrator is the seamless integration with micro integrated products. So that enables you to combine the power of enterprise integration and stream processing and together and build very powerful and robust data processing pipeline. So this is a unique feature uh, of uh, WSO2 EI7 uh, uh, product offering. Okay. So now that we talked about the streaming integrated product, so let's see what are the common use cases and how it can fit into the enterprise integration scenario. So real-time ETL is one of the most straightforward and very easy to implement uh, in scenarios uh, using the WS2 streaming integrator. So it supports change data capture for a lot of, um, most of the uh, uh, common um, uh, DBs such as Oracle, MySQL, MSQL, Mongo and etc um, and also it can read large files in a streaming manner meaning even if the file is like let's say 100 or 500 gbs it will it can still consume uh, that file in a streaming manner uh, without being uh, without requiring a lot of uh, uh, memory so the amount of memory required by the streaming integrator is only governed by the processing that you are doing there and also it can uh, tail uh, a file and meaning uh, if the file gets updated that updates can be captured in real time as well and also uh, streaming integrator can be used to do stateful uh, streaming based integrations for an ex uh, when i say stateful um, integration it uh, it means that if your integration requires you to remember the past uh, so that such integration scenarios can be uh, uh, implemented using streaming integrator of, uh, uh, i mean throttling is a classic example for that for that you might need to remember okay how many requests that i've been receiving in last one week so if it's uh, let's say your throttling requirement is i would not let more than 10 requests pass by within one minute you will need to count and know uh, keep that count in memory so such uh, scenarios can be easily implemented using streaming integrator so the streaming integrator itself has some integration capabilities such as api calls service calls etc but if you have a complex integration requirement like executing a long service chain you can pass it on to the micro integrator which requires very less effort from a developer from developer so everything else the, the the underneath wiring will be taken care of by the streaming integrator itself and also we say uh, streaming integrator is an ideal product for integrating streaming systems so when i say streaming systems here i mean to say uh, systems such as kafka and nets and uh, yeah, uh, yeah and kafka and nets so we treat uh, such systems at, as complementing technologies. Therefore, especially in Kafka's case, we support all the feature sets that enable streaming. For an example, if you take Kafka, we support uh, uh, reading from multiple topics, multiple partitions, reading from an offset, and also um, uh, consumer groups that all these uh, streaming related uh, uh, features that they provide. So we uh, you closely track what are the features that are being released by these vendors and keep our connectors up to date, well tested for functional and performance, etc. And also, you can combine these uh, streaming systems uh, with the advanced stream processing capabilities and data processing capabilities of CD, uh, of uh, and then uh, we have produced more advanced results and or gain more out of that 
and also the stateful nature of SI enables you to advance streaming features. For an example, let's say you need, I mean, you there's this topic which you uh, which the server reads up to 99 messages and crashes, and it has to start up again and resume from uh, 100. So in order to do that, the server has to memor keep memorize what what was the last option that he read. So that sort of functionalities are automatically taken care of by the streaming integrator. So that becomes more complex when you uh, read from multiple topics and multiple parts. Okay, and so so if we look at the big picture, so here, uh, so uh, if you look at the big picture, if you uh, see uh, see let's check this uh, this flow. So here, if you have a database which has, needs to be integrated uh, with the, your data warehouse as well as a legacy system, you can place streaming integrator in middle and use change data capture and publish it to your legacy system, maybe as a HTTP request, and also load it into your data warehouse. So if it was not for streaming integrator, you might need to have two point-to-point -point connections with the task running, which loads data to these two systems which is not scalable and also streaming integrator can read logs in a streaming manner uh, let's say you're there's this legacy system which produces a log that needs to be integrated with uh, uh, other systems you can use streaming integrator to extract that log file and also meanwhile you can consume uh, events coming in from a streaming system and also load data from your data warehouse take uh, right complex business logics uh, um, in order to process all uh, by treating this log file this streaming system and data warehouse as just as streams and apply stream processing techniques and then um, take uh, various actions maybe through micro integrator uh, not only that uh, it can expose your the, the, the process data uh, via apis which can be fronted by an api management layer Maybe you can monetize that uh, the, the process data which has valuable information uh, through a, a good use of a API management layer. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. So uh, so that's uh, uh, the, that's uh, we'll conclude the the, the introduction uh, and uh, about uh, the product. So. I will uh, uh, pass on uh, the, the, the webinar to, to my colleague Anuj Jayasundare for a demo, which will walk you through the functionalities that we talked about. Thank you, Sajid. Uh, hi, everyone. So uh, I'll walk you through the demonstration. So uh, for this demonstration, we have uh, selected a scenario of a company uh, uh, which sells electric equipment worldwide. So uh, this, uh, let's just think that this uh, uh, company had a legacy system where they were writing the selling details into a CSV file uh, periodically so that uh, at, let's say that in an hour, hour of time period, they need a summary of uh, regional wise, uh, uh, like sales statistics. So we are going to uh, use streaming integrator to uh, modernize this approach and uh, in this in their transition period so we can uh, use both uh, legal uh, sorry uh, logistic uh, uh, legacy system uh, streams and also the modern application like http endpoints to receive data and uh, do the transition period very smoothly using streaming integrator so i'll uh, walk you through the scenario and then uh, let's uh, develop this Siddhi app. Uh, so, uh, Siddhi app uh, streaming uh, scenario using the uh, streaming integrator tooling, and let's do a test on uh, using that tooling uh, runtime, and then let's deploy that into the uh, production server, which is which will be a streaming integrator uh, runtime. So, uh, let's move on to the demonstration. Uh, so uh, I have uh, already uh, so I have already uh, started the Kafka server. So we are uh, we are going to publish the data into a Kafka topic at the end. 
so that the downstream uh, application can consume data through that uh, Kafka stream. And uh, so uh, streaming integrate as uh, streaming integrator has two distributions. Uh, one is the streaming integrator, uh, which we are using as the uh, production server. So, and the other one is the streaming integrator tooling distribution, which we are used to develop uh, streaming applications, uh, test those streaming application. And uh, again, we can use that uh, streaming integration tooling to deploy the uh, develop the application into a, a production server. So I'll start the streaming integrator tooling first. Uh, for that, we have to run the uh, tooling SH file, which is there in the bin directory. And uh, in the streaming integrator distribution, to run the streaming integrator, integrator server, we have to start the uh, server.sh file, which is there in the bin directory. So uh, in the streaming uh, integrator tooling, when we start a streaming integrator tooler, there are uh, three main uh, services which are getting started. Uh, first one is the template editor, which we are using to uh, develop the templates so that we can use that template in the business rules. So the second one is the editor that we are using to uh, develop the streaming applications and test those streaming applications. The third one is the business rule itself. So we can use this business rule to deploy uh, business related rules so that the managers can edit those rules in order to uh, deploy a configured CD app in a production environment. So in this demonstration, I'm going to demonstrate how to design a uh, streaming uh, app using a streaming uh, integrator tooling editor. So let's open the web base uh, tooler. So when you are logged into the streaming integrator tooling uh, editor in the first time, you will get this edit tour guide. So you can uh, go through the tour guide in order to get familiar with the streaming integrator editor and its functionalities. For now, let's close this. And you can create a new file using uh, clicking on the new. And in a streaming, uh, this editor on time, we have two ways of designing a CD app. The, if you are a, a developer who likes to uh, do code more, so you can use the code view of the editor. Or if you like uh, low code development, you can use the design view to uh, design your CD app or the uh, streaming uh, uh, integration uh, app application. So I'll uh, give a name to the our uh, demo app so since this is a, a sales related uh, development i'll use the name as uh, sales detail summarizer and let's uh, we can provide a description for the uh, streaming app so that the others can uh, uh, get an understanding about what this uh, streaming integration app does. So let's give. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, we can do the development using the design view. So for this uh, demo purpose, I'll use the design view to do the de uh, development. So we can go to the source view and to uh, in this uh, source view, uh, sorry, design view, you can see there are icons on the left corner. So these are the uh, functionalities are the palettes, uh, which uh, for each palette uh, you can when you hover through those palettes you can see what are those things so this is stream trigger partition source uh, likewise you can drag and drop those into the uh, design uh, grid in order to uh, design your CDR. 
so I have a drag and drop uh, stream. So we uh, first we need to have a stream in order to hold the data which are getting uh, which are uh, we are going to receive from outside. So I'll when we double click on this, we are getting this uh, panel for the configuration. So let's uh, provide a name for this tree. Uh, since this uh, the data is related to sales, let's uh, provide the name as sales details. And we can uh, uh, define the attributes here. So uh, before I uh, define the attributes, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this uh, legacy app has a CSV file which is generated periodically. So we are going to receive data from that uh, CSV file. So I'll show the uh, sample CSV file that we have uh, used. We are using here. Um, so this is the uh, sample uh, CSV file, uh, sales data CSV. So it has uh, five columns. Uh, first one is the uh, uh, sales ID. The second one is the region that the sale has been uh, done. And the third one is the product ID. And the fourth one is the uh, product price. And the fifth one is the quantity of the product uh, that they have sold. So uh, to tally with that, I'm uh, going to uh, define the uh, attributes for this stream. So the first one will be uh, uh, sales ID. It, it will be a string. Uh, second one will be the region. It is also a string. Uh, third one is the product ID. It is also a string. The fourth one will be the product price. Uh, let's have a long for that. And uh, finally, uh, the quantity. Uh, for that, let's have an int. So after we define the attributes, we can uh, press on the submit. And you can see that the below the uh, icon, the stream name has been uh, shown. So to receive the data from the uh, external, we have to define uh, source configurations. Uh, so for that also, we have source annotations here. So we can drop, drag and drop the source configurations. And to uh, hold the data which are receiving from the source, we have to uh, join this with a stream. So let's join this uh, source in, with the sales detail stream that we have uh, defined. And when we double click on this, you can select a source type from the from here. So for this CD uh, application, uh, streaming integration application, we need to have two source sources, one for the HTTP and the other one for the uh, to read the legacy system file. So let's define the HTTP source first. Uh, you can select the HTTP from here. There are multiple source. Uh, uh, connectors uh, for uh, streaming integrator which is which are supporting so let's select the http for now and uh, for the receiver url let's we have to provide a receiver url here so uh, so the uh, since the uh, this server is running on my local machine i'm uh, having the host as the local host and you can provide any port here which is not already used. And a uh, endpoint for the uh, uh, the host to uh, the rest endpoint to start. So let's uh, and we have to provide a map uh, mapper type. So there are numerous mappers for the streaming integrator. You can use Avro, binary, CSV, JSON, likewise. So let's use the JSON for now. And let's submit it. So now uh, we have a one 
source and a string. So let's define the other source as well to read the file. And let's connect that source also into the sales detail string. And double click on that. And let's select the file type. And for the file, we have to provide a file URI. And I have saved my file to my uh, to resource folder. Let's provide that URI. And mod, let's put the mod as line and the tailing true. And since uh, the file is uh, file is a CSV, for the map type, let's select the CSV. And let's submit it as a. Now we have two uh, sources and one string. Uh, before we add the uh, processing part, let's define another stream to hold the process data. And double click on that. Uh, since this is the process data stream, let's have it as the sales details uh, process string and the attribute will be we need to have the cells id it will be a string and uh, region uh, product id and we are going to calculate that Total price for that sale. And total price, let's take it as a long value. And let's submit, submit it. And now uh, let's define a query. So, in this, when you are defining a query, you have to provide the input for that query and the output stream for that query and let's when you double click on this the property will be appear and here you can give a name for the query uh, let's write the name as total sales price calculator and Since we have already uh, connected the input stream, the from value will be updated. And uh, for the projection, uh, that means for the output, we need to have, we have to define the output. So in that case, we can uh, use the user define attributes. So uh, from the input stream, we have to select the uh, fields that we want to output. So sales ID will be outputted as the sales ID. The region will be also used as a region. The product ID also there in the input stream. And the total price is not there in the input stream. So we have to calculate that. Uh, what we have is the product price. And we have to multiply it by the quantity to get the total price. And then uh, let's submit it. So now we have the uh, input stream. The query to calculate the total sales for a particular sale, and then the uh, uh, processed uh, sales detail stream. So now, uh, since uh, our output should be the region-wise, uh, region-wise sales sta status per hour. So let's add another stream to output uh, the final result into a the kafka stream so let's define that stream as well so for that let's use the name as uh, sales details output stream and for the attributes what we are going to output is region uh, region it's a string and then the total sales count for that region uh, 
it will be let's take it as a law and the total sales price for that particular region let's take it all as a law and uh, let's submit that as a now we have we need to uh, have a window in order to uh, aggregate those data so let's have a query uh, and connect the dots in order to provide the input and output and double click and uh, let's give a name for this query as well let's give region sales calculation window so since we are going to add a window uh, we have to click on the stream handler in there we can add a window so let's have a batch window you can select uh, the all the windows that are supported by uh, streaming integrator is listed under here let's for this time let's use a uh, time batch window and since uh, for the demonstration purposes let's give a 15 uh, second as the batch and uh, for the projections let's uh, define the attributes again so we have to output the region and total sales we can get it by count and the total sales price for that let's we have to add a sum for the uh, total price and we since we need this by uh, per uh, region let's group by uh, from the region and we are good to save this as a let's submit and now we have the whole process without the uh, publishing part so before we publish this data into the kafka itself let's test using a uh, log uh, log uh, logger so for that we can add a sync and for the sync uh, we can uh, connect the output stream to the sync and uh, provide the sync type as the log so the uh, let's have the map type as the csv and submit now uh, after we uh, now uh, we are good with our Siddhya, uh, streaming execution. So let's uh, test this using the uh, developer mode. So let's move on to the source view again. So with, uh, parallel to the uh, design view, all the uh, code has been written into the uh, source view automatically. So you can see that this is the sales detail stream that we have already defined and the two sources that we have added file and http and the log sync that we have added and the two queries that we have written so since there are data in this file when we run this uh, siddhi app you can see uh, a log getting printed with the summarized data after 15 seconds so let's check whether that works i, I have saved the siddhi app and we are getting this uh, Siddhya uh, successful deployed log and when we let's run this up and after we ran this in a 15 second uh, the events will be getting uh, summarized and will be published into the sale details output stream and here uh, the logs has been printed so we have uh, three events for the APAC region and two events for the EU region. So that has been printed here. So we have APEC uh, three events and the total uh, price is 9,750. For the EU, we have two events. So the total will be 6,250. And if, let's say that we don't have a 
events in this file so we want to uh, test this using simulation so for that we can use the event simulator which is there in the editor runtime so you can click on the there's this uh, event simulator in the left uh, icon panel and you can from this one you can select a cd app so the cd app that we have deployed this sales detail summarizer and the from the stream name we have we can select any stream so since in this cd app the input stream is sales detail stream so i'm going to select that one and uh, we can provide the uh, values for these attributes which which are the attributes of that stream so let's provide region as latin and product id as pc001 product price as 2000 and the quantity as 2 and we when we send the event it will be aggregated let's say send two events for the latin so after 15 seconds since we have a 15 seconds uh, time batch window uh, now the log has got printed so the uh, latin region has sell two uh, uh trans has done a two transaction which is uh, the total sales price is 8000 so now uh, we have tested our deployed uh, developed city app the streaming uh, application so we can we are good to deploy this in the production environment before that uh, let's stop the uh, app that we have deployed and uh, let's go to the design view in order to add the uh, kafka uh, top publisher so we have defined a log publisher here uh, let's double click on that and change that into the kafka publisher so in the kafka when we are defining a kafka publisher we have to provide a bootstrap server so i have already defined a bootstrap server so it's there in the local host 9092 and the topic is region sales summary and this is not a binary and the map type is also csv so yeah good to have that as well and let's save this it here move into the source view let's save this and we have already started the uh, WSO2 SI, so the production server. Let's deploy this CD app directly to the WSO2 uh, streaming integrator. So for that, we can use the deploy to server feature in streaming integrator editor. So when you click on deploy to server, you can select the CD app or apps which you want to deploy to the server. You can select uh, in this case let's select the sales detail summarize app and then you can uh, provide the configuration for the uh, new server host uh, and the port 9443 in this scenario and the username and the password of that server so you can uh, deploy onto multiple servers using this and let's deploy and you will get this uh, status as successfully if it is getting deployed successfully. So if you go to the streaming integrator server, you can see that the CD app has been deployed to the server. And uh, let's uh, tell the uh, Kafka logs in order to uh, monitor the topic. So when we deploy the CD app into the streaming integrator server, it has already read the data which are there in the uh, file that we have configured and uh, summarized and published into the Kafka uh, topic. So these are the two uh, events that has been published into the Kafka topic. topic. So uh, uh, this was happened because of the uh, file source that we have added. Uh, let's uh, let's say that uh, the uh, modern app uh, which is sending data into the HTTP S is also uh, have in production now. So let's send a uh, data to data to that HTTP uh, source as well. So for that I have two curls. 
So the first one will uh, uh, introduce a cell. Uh, the ID is 006. It's for the LATAM. And the product ID is PZ001. And the product price is 2500. And quantity is 2. So let's execute that comma. And the second one is also, uh, let's ex execute that as well. So the second one is also for the sale 007 APEC. Uh, the product ID is PC002 PC and the product price is 2000 with a quantity of five. So let's execute the first one first and the second one then. And with uh, the with an interval of 15 seconds, uh, 15 seconds, the aggregated value will be here, right? Uh, so for the LATAM one, we have done one uh, sale with 5,000. The APEC one, we have done uh, one sale with uh, 10,000 value. So uh, then again, uh, if let's say that you have a, a containerized environment, you want to deploy this in a uh, Docker or a Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster. So at that point, you can export this uh, configuration that you have, uh, the the CD app that you have uh, developed as a Docker or a Kubernetes artifact. So I'll show how you how we can uh, export this as a Docker. For that, you can uh, click on this uh, export for Docker, and uh, then again. Uh, uh, Give me a second. Uh, you can select the CD app that you want to export from here and then select next. And uh, in containerized environment, in containerized environment, you have to uh, template few fields like a host, port, and the endpoint URL. So you can template those values from here. And if you want to change the configurations which are related to the server, you can change those configuration here in this file. And then uh, if you have in the steps four, if you have done any uh, templation in step two, you can provide the def uh, default values or the values that you want to replace from here in the step four. And then let's say that you have to add uh, external jars, you can add those jars from here and export. So at that point, it will create a zip uh, file which has the Docker artifacts so that you can uh, build that Docker and uh, deploy in a Docker environment. So uh, that's about it for the demo. If you have any question regarding the webinar, you can post that uh, in the uh, webinar chat. So we are happy to answer any question that you have. Yeah, so um, just one question. Um, so it says, uh, so which protocol do you use to transmit the transmit uh, the stream data? So I guess um, so here uh, the, this question is referring to the, to the demo. So in the demo, we use two protocols. First one is the HTTP source, which sends data as HTTP post request, and also um, we used uh, a file source uh, which reads uh, just files. Um, yeah. Um, I hope that I, I answered your question there. And also, um, there's another question. Um, when the data is in one of the streams, is it possible to access an API or is it only available within WSO2? Okay. So if you want to access a stream uh, data that was flown through a stream, you will need to uh, store it. And uh, then we have a something called the store query API, which can be used to fetch that data, not just uh, you know select data, but also you can summarize them and uh, do various processing as you fetch that data. Okay, and um, there's another, uh, question so what's the throughput of the internal streams that we create in the cdf so uh, if i talk about internal streams internal streams are actually um uh internal streams are actually uh, in memory queues uh, underneath 
so uh, i would say the the, the throughput of inter, uh, in, uh, internal streams as much as you can get from your external streams of course the, the throughput is bounded by the amount of events that you can consume through the external stream so uh, the, the input the internal streams can accommodate uh, any amount of items because it's just in memory so there's no upper limit so the upper bound will be decided by the external stream okay um okay there's a, another question so it's asked can si replace debcm or cdc so uh, yes uh, but i would say the more accurate statement would be like it implements cdc and debcm connectors um so that you don't have write code or anything you can just use our cdc connector which which actually uses debcm underneath then um, also then just uh consume that inf the information extracted through cdc just like a normal stream so all the the complexities related to debcm implementation and cdc is taken care of by the stream um, uh, streaming integrator okay uh, okay so that's another question so is that is the artifact zip file a docker image or do we need to create the docker image file ourselves so actually it's the docker file so it's not the image so you will have to create the the, the docker image yeah so all the required like uh, packs and things are hosted so the, the docker image file is uh, generated with relevant information so it's just that you need to create the image um okay so and also there's another question like uh, uh, is uh, a streaming integrator uh, and uh, stream processor are the same so for those who know about uh, stream ws2 product stack ws2 stream processor used to be our analytics and stream processing offering but going forward um, um, so the si will be the successor of a stream processor um yeah uh okay yeah, and also the another question that has come up with is uh, streaming integrator is a replacement for Kafka. Uh, no, streaming integrator and Kafka are no are not competitors. Stream Kafka is uh, is more into message delivery with the Kafka broker. Of course, KSQL has certain stream processing. Uh, I mean, I would say good stream processing capabilities, but streaming integrator itself. Uh, is uh, more specialized in stream processing and uh, integrating data uh, with multiple endpoints so they i would they i would say that they are complementing technologies rather than competing technologies uh, so yeah right okay so i think that's all the questions that we got so if you uh, don't have any questions we can wrap up okay okay um okay so thank you everyone for attending so it was a great pleasure um so please get in touch if you have any questions thanks again for attending yeah hope it was useful for you